Okay, so this is another short tutorial in 3D Studio Max Design, and we're going to be looking specifically at this one on rendering multiple passes and combining those, um, rendering multiple passes in 3D Studio Max and then combining those passes in Photoshop. So I've already got a really rough, kind of ugly scene here built just as a simple demo. Uh, it does have a daylighting system in place uh, using mental ray. So there'll be a few things that we'll need to adjust. Um, and obviously, while this is not architecture, we're going to use some techniques that hopefully will translate to your architectural renderings. So the first thing that we're going to look at is let's go ahead and do a base rendering and have that file saved and ready to export uh, into bringing that into Photoshop. So I'm just going to go to the rendering dialog box, render setup verify that I'm rendering camera zero one which in the scene is right here I'm gonna press, press render and so you can see it's a really simple scene with of course the default teapot in the scene and once this is done rendering I'm going to save this as a target file uh, into the folder I've created for this so we're gonna select targa I'm just going to call this the main pass and I'm going to click save. I want to make sure compress and pre-multiplied alpha are checked and we want to keep it as a 32-bit alpha. So I'm going to say OK and then close. The next thing that I'm going to do is let's set up a rendering that is going to do a specific job of highlighting the edges um, so I can bring those in as a single pass. Um, using the ink and paint tool inside of the material editor in 3ds max so I'm gonna to go to my material editor and there are the the three basic materials right here that I've used in the scene so far um, and what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna to go to my standard maps and grab ink and paint and lay that in um, we want to use a white color So I'm going to go ahead and set that up um, because really what we're interested in is painting only the edges. So we're going to paint everything as white. Now if I come into this, let's open a preview window and let's look really quickly at a couple of the settings. Paint levels are going to give me multiple shades of gray. And I really don't want those shades of gray. I'm really interested in using ink and paint for edges. So I'm going to set my paint levels at one, my color at white. So essentially I'm going to be painting a, um, I'm going to be using the white on the objects and the ink portion to uh, bring out some detail in the edges. So I'm going to use uh, ink that's checked. I'm going to turn on variable width and I'm going to use um, a minimum line width of 5 and a maximum of 9 and that should give me uh, some decent variation between the two line widths. So what I'm going to do next is under processing I'm going to turn on material override. We basically want everything in this pass to run with this ink and paint. So I'm going to drag my output node directly over to my material override and select OK for instance. And let's go ahead and rename that material uh, ink and paint away. And let's just make sure that that's working correctly there. Okay, so from here what I want to do is if I do a rendering at this point, I'm going to hit F9, it's going to render everything as completely black. So that's absolutely not what I want. What I need to, to do is go back to my exposure control and I need to turn off two items. I need to set no exposure control. Actually I think that's the only one for this pass that we want to do is turn off the exposure control. Let's, let's see what renders now. I'm going to hit F9 for render again. Perfect. And now I have only the edges on a white background of my object. So I can save this and I'm going to save it again as a target and let's call this one the edge pass. 
And so again, that was done simply by turning off the exposure control. Okay, so let's go to another pass. Let's add another material. I'm going to add Arc and Design. And this time on the Diffuse Color Map channel of the Architecture and Design material. Let's go ahead and call this M Occlusion. This time we're going to add an ambient occlusion to our diffuse pass. So the ambient occlusion is underneath the mental ray rendering tools. It's right here, ambient slash reflective occlusion. And I'm going to drag that right there to my diffuse map. And this time I'm going to drag the output node to my material override. Say I have ambient occlusion here now. And what I'm going to do is we will, we're going to set our samples to 64. We'll get a little bit more detail in the lighting. And I'm going to set my maximum distance to 0. And let's go ahead and render this pass now. And we'll see what we get. And you can see in this case it is rendering everything too bright. Even before the rendering is done we can tell that um, the brightness factor on it is way too much. So go ahead and let this one finish out and you'll see I'm only getting a couple of the darkest shadows. And what we want is more brightness and contrast throughout that image so that way we can really enhance um, this as an overlay inside of Photoshop. So I'm not going to save this file but let's do two other quick things. I'm going to go back to my ambient occlusion material that started off as the Arc and Design material. And let's make sure that our reflectivity is down to zero. We don't want to carry any reflections in this. And then let's also make sure that on our um, overall environment, it's right here, that our global lighting is set to zero. I still want to make sure that I have no on the exposure control. If it's set up to uh, mental ray photographic exposure control, uh, we're going to get odd results. We should get sort of a black rendering again. Dropping the global lighting down to zero should allow us to only have a basic understanding of the gradient values of the objects. Yeah, that's already looking much, much better. Alright, so I'm going to save this object out as the ambient occlusion pass. I'm sticking with the Targa file format here. And now we're ready to drop all of these into Photoshop and look at how they can combine. So I'm going to go File, Open. and I'm going to select all three of these files. So from my main pass here, let's go ahead and do a select all and edit copy and now into a new layer I'm going to do a control paste. Just use a control V. Let's do the same thing with the edge pass. Select all, edit copy, back to the main pass, edit, paste. So I now have three layers. If I turn off the top two layers, um, you can see that I have my, my base rendering from my background, my ambient occlusion pass, and my edge pass. So let's just start by looking at the edge pass. If I set um, this layer from normal to multiply, I now get a rendering with edges. And I can sort of downplay those edges if I want to. But that gives me a little bit more of an architectural style where I can see both surface and an edge. It's a step away from rendering something photorealistically, but it's giving me a little bit more style. And the more I work with those edges in 3D Studio Max, the more I can emulate certain styles, including sort of a sketchy style or having edges overlap, things like that. So let's go ahead and turn that off and let's look at the ambient occlusion pass. And again, I'm going to set that layer to multiply as well. 
once I have that, you can already see a pretty dramatic result. Just turn that on and off. And you can see the amount of, of contrast, sort of the depth, the edges that start to pop out are much, much more dramatic. I can also play with that effect simply by changing my opacity slider until I get the right amount of contrast that I'm really interested in. That concludes looking at multiple passes from 3D Studio Max.